Americans, what is something us Europeans aren't ready to hear? The way people drive in Italy makes me understand why they are so religious and also so blasphemous source. I'm an Italian that swears like a sailor every time I have to drive somewhere. Our ideas of foreign cuisine are basically products of the immigrant experience. I had an interesting sidebar, tangent thought thing in a similar vein recently. The biscuit v's biscuit debate between Yuk and Yusa. Apparently, at around the time of the American Revolution, American biscuits were a product that grew out of foot shortages and supply limitations. They didn't have any leavening, so they were pretty crispy. They were similar to other biscuits in the UK at the time. They were mostly used as a way to make the most of what you had and to help the flour keep longer, especially for travel on both sides of the Atlantic. But then, as our histories diverged more and more over time, so did our food cultures. Ook biscuits stayed crispy and went sweet. Us biscuits went fluffy and savory. The leavening agent used in us biscuits derived from pearl ash potash and was native to the U.S. and used by Native Americans as a leavening agent. Experimentations with the Victorian period eventually lead to the development of baking powder, which ended up being used as a crucial ingredient for American biscuits. So American biscuits, so American biscuits and UK biscuits are cousins with a shared history, which is why they share a name. This is what people don't get about Italian or Chinese food in the U.S. It was brought over 200 years ago and was made with the ingredients they had available. It grew separately from the food in those original country. I understand some names being the same makes it confusing when there are ingredient differences, but be a little flexible for God's sake. German here, but us Europeans aren't ready to hear this. Abortion is generally not legal in Germany. It's available. It's usually not prosecuted, but it's not legal. Doctor in Munich. I can confirm. It's logistically also very difficult to get an abortion in Germany. You must be 12 weeks pregnant or earlier. You must have a consultation with a psychologist, social worker, before. And it has to be done at a certified center, of which there are very few. Nine to ten gynecologists don't even offer any abortion services. While abortions are technically illegal, they are not prosecuted in very specific circumstances, but it's very hard to do so. This was something that struck me kind of funny after the whole Rue v. Wade thing last year. I'm an American in Germany, and tons of people wanted to talk to me about how horrible it is what the U.S. was doing. I was like, yeah, I agree. It's not what I want, but much of Europe still has more regressive abortion laws than most of the us. Most every European I've met who hasn't been here before has been totally unprepared for the massive size of the use. We had some distant relatives come to Boston from Scotland. We asked what their plans were, and one of the things they wanted to do was take a day trip to Lay. I asked, did you rent a rocket car? At Lisbon to Moscow is a shorter trip than San Francisco to New York. The Kefsi Double Down will both disgust and delight you. My husband just told me yesterday that they brought it back. I was in college the first time the Double Down showed up. Me and two buddies went and got them. We came back to my apartment and ate one each. All three of us woke up several hours later and no one remembered falling asleep. Our bodies shut down to protect us. You're gonna need air conditioners in your homes pretty soon. Yeah, we're still in denial for the most part, but slowly coming to understand that the way some of my German friends talk about Ack, you'd think it's pumping mustard gas straight into your house. They hate it and think Americans are weak for relying on it. And I'm like, okay, come sit in my 105 Fortic house in Missouri with humidity so high you stick to all the furniture for four months out of the year and see how strong you are after that. Twitter is a totally small network where simply 10 of customers make up 80s of the content. There's actually a Yuke's rule of thumb that's the 99-1 rule. It tends to be true across multiple social media platforms. One of users create the original posts. Nine of users create the original posts. Nine of users engage with or comment on those posts. Ninety of users just lurk. Public toilets being free should be a standard. Not an American, but having to pay a euro to just wash my hands at an Italian train station was wild. Yes, I went to Mexico to visit my GF recently and have such a better appreciation for public restrooms in the US now. And quit smoking. I was just in Italy for 10 days. I loved it, and there were a lot of things I thought I wish we had that. But damn, everything smelled like cigarettes and sewage. I'm from Italy, and I agree. I'm in the first year of high school, and at least half of my class smokes slow. 
How else are we going to philosophize in cafes? Yes, I love the cafe culture in the Balkans. But my God, even when we sit outside, I walk away smelling like cigarettes. Going to the bathroom is a human right and should be free. The irony of having free healthcare but having to pay to use the bathroom. When I lived in Germany, German girl, I've read that Mexicans in Los Angeles experience a lot of racism. Me, yes, Mexican people in Los Angeles do experience racism, probably similar to the Turks here in Germany. German girl, that's different. The Turks aren't suitable here. They don't fit in. When I was bartending here in Austria, I would warn people not to say racist or hateful shit around me. The answer was always, we're talking about Turkish people, not black people. Yup, it's the same in the UK too. So many Brits will jump on America for racism and call out the Trump supporter rhetoric about Mexicans being rapists and criminals. But if you ask them why they don't want migrants coming to the UK, they'll tell you it's because they're rapists and criminals. Bro, I moved to Germany three years ago, and the amount of racist bullshit I hear about Turkish people is astounding. People are so open with it. Classic. Europeans. Americans are very racist toward dark-skinned people. Americans. Treat the Roma like human beings. Europe. Law good one. It's extremely shocking to people when I say Japanese people can be some of the most xenophobic people you'll ever meet. Japan isn't in Europe, but it's in the vein of Oh Japan is so much better than America Romans like people view Europe. Americans are brought up to be very vocal about opinions and other countries. Just don't really do that. I am not sure if it's cultural or how a government conducts itself on why it happened. But every time something happens that hits American airwaves about European or East Asia racism, someone in my inner circle does a gasp while saying what? But that can't be. Who could they possibly be racist against? You never hear about it. It's like... Bro, maybe pick up a history book. <gasps> Who do you think started colonization? Lol, I'm Turkish living in Germany. Europe is deaf just as racist as America, but the racism here is just more subtle and kind of normalized too. The problem with America is that Americans have been kind of gaslit into believing they are the shitty people of the first world. I think that's one of the reasons they have this strange romanticism with Europeans. Racism isn't just an American thing. I lived in a cosmopolitan university town in Belgium and live in one now in America. In my four years in Belgium, I faced near constant racism. My favorite were the slit eyes, forks Chinese chatter, and kung fu hands. I am very obviously Southeast Asian. People would go out of their way and walk up to me to be racist. In 17 years in America, the only instance of overt racism I experienced was when some drunken frat boys in a car shouted white power while I was walking down the street. A random stranger immediately walked up to me and apologized. And I've been to gun shows and knife shows. Don't get me wrong, I loved Belgium and had a generally positive experience there. I still speak Flemish, which throws most people for a loop. If I had a chance to visit again, I would go in a heartbeat. But it could be pretty racist, and this was before Vlaams Belang. When I was stationed in Germany while in the army, I was floored by the level of racism my black friends encountered from locals. From looks of disgust in public to outright racist comments spoken out loud without shame or hesitation. It really was shocking. Ask Europeans about the Roma. Asia enters the chat. It's too difficult to generalize Europe as a whole, but I have plenty of things to say about individual countries. Before you start, do you have a problem with Luxembourg? Earl are getting fat too. In France, anything tastes good with enough butter. This is one of the biggest ones, no pun intended. Especially the Brits too, three are overweight, obese, same as us. But they constantly criticize fat Americans who eat at McDonald's. Guess it's only okay to be fat if you eat at Greg's instead. Obesity rate in the UA dropped after Brexit, so technically we're doing better, right? I was surprised to discover how friendly and helpful Americans are. From watching TV, you just come across as assholes, but in person, you guys are great. I once went to a cafe in America, where the barista, after handing me my coffee, told me to have a dynamite day. No one has told me to have a dynamite day since. I'm Canadian, and I've been a visitor in both Europe and America. In my experience, Europeans are far, far less friendly and helpful towards tourists than Americans. TV producers found out a long time ago that the violence and the drama got the most views. Even if it's all fake and the viewers know it. Jerry Springer found this out 
started out a nice show, then devolved into to what it became known as Spike TV found out and was confronted when they changed to showing only drama and violence. Their viewer numbers and revenue skyrocketed when the violence came, so they kept it going despite the backlash. Social media has found out in the last couple of years. It's all fake. A day out in America is just as mundane as a day out anywhere in Europe. I've been around both. It's not all cop chases and school shooting like TV would have you believe. I'm a Californian and people say this about us. We wouldn't do too good in Japan though. We'd look like weirdos being open and talkative with everyone. The Columbus Blue Jackets have been eliminated from playoff contention. British people mock us for using imperial measurements and then still order pints at the pub and use stones as a measurement of weight. Americans have big portion sizes in restaurants because we have a big leftovers culture, while some people will eat their whole meal. It's completely normal if you don't and you'll be offered a two. Go box to take it home. There isn't really a big expectation to finish your meal at restaurants. Going to restaurants growing up, my parents would always order me a regular adult meal, and the leftovers would be my next two, three meal. Holy fuck, yes, this is one of the weirdest ones for me. There are a lot of things you can complain about with how the US does things, but I've never understood the focus on portion sizes. If there is too much food on the plate, just don't eat it. Ask for a box and take it home for dinner lunch the next day. Biscuits and gravy is delicious. I watched a TikTok of Irish high schoolers trying biscuits gravy for the first time, and watching their reactions go from fear and disgust to heaven and bliss was amazing. If you haven't been here, living in America is 100 totally different from what you think. Having moved from the West Coast to the East Coast, I can safely say even most Americans don't know how differently we live from state to state. Air conditioning, ice and free potable water are all nice things to have. Screens on windows. In the use, sir, there's a ton of people that actually wear pajamas in public. Come visit Dublin. It's not just in the use. You can be just as racist as Americans. I've seen the way you talk about Romani and Muslims. Holy shit. And black people. And Chinese people. This was super bad during the pandemic and still is. Holy shit. Edit to the Europeans defending racism by saying Chinese tourists are shitty. Oh, then call those tourists out then. Stop treating every single Chinese person the same. Making the slanted eyes with your fingers is nazy shit. There's no defense of how Europe treats people of color. And the fact that you come here and defend it with something pathetic, like, well, the tourists are shit. Orc, so are British tourists in Amsterdam. Will you treat every single Brit the way you treat black and Asian people? We all know you won't. Yes, you guys are racist, Af. Get some therapy and stop being shitbags. There are actually more states than Texas, New York, and California. And even when talking about California, New York, and Texas, there are more to the states than people think. Usually, when mentioning K, it's almost always La and beaches, when it's actually a huge state with different climates. Nai is always about nice, which area, why is it small when compared to how large the state is, which is actually a lot of rural suburban space. Texas is usually cowboys and pickup trucks, but not everyone fits that. And every state has jerks in pickup trucks. We're not uncultured. It's a 10 hour flight to a foreign country. We can't just drive over to another country for a weekend getaway. As an Australian, I can relate to this. It takes around 24 hours to get to most other countries, if not longer. There is, of course, the exceptions of New Zealand and Bali, but even then, you're still spending a fair bit. Bali has so many Australians there, the culture is basically the same, and New Zealand is kind of like what Canada is to the USET. I'm planning a nine-week trip to Europe, and it's going to cost a minimum of $11,000 out just for me, and that's not even including the bills rent I still have to pay while I'm over there. Luckily, I'm a single adult with no dependents, and I prioritize travel over owning a house or starting a family. I remember as a kid in the 90s, we were a lower income family, dad and four kids, and it was a luxury to get in a caravan and take a trip to another state for a week or two, forget about going overseas. It's also not that I don't want to go to overseas, but like, I can go to the Appalachian Mountains, the Rocky Mountains, vastly different places, tropical islands, there's thousands of beaches from sunny to frozen, the Great Lakes are their own thing, there's a giant desert with all kinds of places and national parks to explore. 
and all of these places have extremely different local cultures and require a few hours of traveling Vs over night flights that cost five times as much. It just makes more sense to travel within the United States for me most of the time. And it is ridiculously expensive, and very few Americans are actually rich. And we only have two weeks of vacation, if we're lucky, most of which would be used up by other non-medical life events. We are actually pretty smart as a nation. The stupid ones are just the loudest and the most annoying. I saw a map on Reddit once that showed what every country leads the world in. For the United States, it said Nobel Prizes and lawnmower deaths. If that is not the most concise summary of these United States, then I don't know what is. Our smarties are very smart, but our dummies are astronomically stupid. When people say Americans are worlds, I feel like they don't realize how huge America is. We span five time zones, which makes it hard to be consistent in anything, and it's really impossible to lump us all into a single group. Edit. Six time zones. Enough to forget about some. True. I have traveled to Europe and they all forget this. I met a guy in Germany who was planning a trip to the US. I had to deliver the bad news that his trip was wildly unrealistic as he wanted to travel to every corner of the US in two weeks. Ohio is the same size as England. And then I show them Ohio in regards to the rest of the United States. That usually starts the process of them realizing how big our country is. We span five time zones six. Don't forget Hawaii or Alaska, depending on which one you are counting as a fifth, ETA, and that's just states. I don't know how many time zones we cover with other territories. Not all American beer tastes like water. Yes, many big name domestic beers taste watery, but not all of them. There are also tons of great craft breweries and microbreweries all over the country that make great beer. We also don't all drink Budweiser. I certainly don't. English people, you invented the word soccer and used it for many decades without any problems. Why as Americans do we continue to get shit from you guys for using this word? It's 2023, it's past time for you to open up those cracks on your bathroom stalls. How are you supposed to be able to judge the contents of a man's soul if you've never made direct eye contact with him while he's pooping? Peanut butter and jelly sandwiches are yummy. That is sleepy time in America, three in Laos, six of them in Nice. So you might not get many answers yet? yet. As a Brit, this may not be my place, but the European superiority complex over America is totally unearned. Most of the American people I have met are very friendly, hardworking, and open people. Lots of European people, lots of European people are somewhat less so. This may just be anecdotal, but I think there's a genuine cultural difference. As for American politics, which I have zero interest in and I'm sick of hearing about, most European countries have major political issues themselves and can't claim any serious moral high ground. Anyway, politics and the actual people of any country are very different things. Europeans shouldn't see our continent as some fantastic place that beats the rest, but just somewhere with many positive and negative attributes. You shouldn't have to pay to use the bathroom or drink water at a restaurant.